In the previous lesson, we learned that resistors are used to funnel or limit the amount of electricity flowing through a circuit. While this is useful, sometimes we need to do the opposite and store energy so that a circuit can operate properly. If you think about a standard point-and-shoot camera, it has a very, very bright flash that is powered by a tiny battery. In order to make that flash so bright, a large amount of electrical energy must be stored and then released when you click the button to take a picture and use the flash. Storing energy is no easy task. However, in electronics, we have two circuit elements that do this very well the capacitor and the inductor. This lesson will focus on the capacitor. What is a capacitor? A capacitor is an electrical circuit element that stores electrical charge in what is called an E-field, short for electricity field. The most basic capacitor looks like two metal plates near each other, one plate for positive charges the other plate for negative charges. Since these metal plates are near each other, positive and negative electrical charges that are attracted to each other begin to collect on the plates and stay there, similar to the attractive forces we saw in our experiment with invisible scotch tape. The distance and size of these metal plates will determine the value of the capacitor called capacitance. Let's perform an experiment to better understand the capacitor's energy storing ways. From the parts kit, you will need a 9-volt connector, a 9-volt battery, 470-ohm resistor, red LED, a random capacitor, choose a big one, and some breadboard wires from the wire kit. To build the circuit, First connect the 9 volt battery and 9 volt battery connector to the breadboard. Add two breadboard wires connecting one to power and the other one to ground. Next, connect the 470 ohm resistor to the wire that comes from power. And then add the LED by connecting it to the resistor and to ground. The LED should now turn on. Finally, connect the capacitor to the power and ground wires. One effect the capacitor has on the circuit immediately is if I pull off the battery power, the LED fades slowly instead of instantly turning off. However, it gets better. Remove the battery power and pull the capacitor out of the circuit. If you touch the capacitor directly onto the battery, it will charge up the capacitor, and we can then touch the resistor and LED, and look, the energy from the capacitor transfers through the circuit, turning the LED on for a short period of time. Thus, the capacitor holds a small amount of electrical charge and behaves like a tiny battery. So now we have to ask ourselves, what is actually happening here? And how do I know which capacitor is what electrical capacitance? To start, electrical capacitance is measured in farads, the capital letter F. For example, 0.1 microfarad, or a 100,000 picofarad capacitor, is a common value used in electronics. For a basic two-plate capacitor, the relationship between electrical voltage, current, and capacitance is given by a single formula. Capacitance equals Q, the charge on the capacitor plates, over voltage. However, there are many other types of capacitors that exist, and so hundreds of other unique equations exist for calculating the exact capacitance for each type of capacitor. Here are a few different types of capacitor packages. You can see the larger through-hole capacitors all share a similar shape. These are made of a ceramic or electrolytic material. The electrolytic capacitors have the negative side labeled with a minus sign. The other type of capacitors is these tiny surface mount capacitors. The through-hole capacitors are all marked with three numbers and a letter that represent the capacitor value and tolerance. 
The way to calculate the capacitance is exactly the same as with resistors. The first two numbers are the significant figures and the third number is the exponent multiplier. However, the difference is that the resulting number is in picofarads. So for this capacitor, 100 nanofarad or 0.1 microfarad. If we take a closer look at the surface mount capacitors, we can't see any markings on them at all. Most surface mount capacitors do not have their value written on them, so you have to use a capacitance meter to find out what their value is. These five surface mount capacitors are all standard sizes. This one is called a 6032 because it is 6 millimeter by 3.2 millimeter. This one is called a 1206, and the last three are even smaller than that. Compared to the through hole capacitors, these things are super tiny, but they do the exact same thing and often produce a better resulting product. Capacitors and electrical capacitance are a core property of all electronics. If you take a look inside any of your electronics like this computer card, you will see both large and tiny capacitors all across the board. All of the capacitors used on modern electronics will be surface mount capacitors. Just like with the resistors, each capacitor has a specific task and capacitance value in farad that allows the board to operate. Let's take another quick look at some capacitors before we finish. Here we have a cheap remote controlled car. When we look at the electronics inside the car, we again see that capacitors are all over the place and that they are even labeled with C1, C2, and etc. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Thank you for watching an introduction to modern electronics, the capacitor. If you're ready for more, please continue on to learn about the inductor, or you can go back and study more about the resistor.